In this video, I will show you how to use the iPad as a MIDI controller via Wi-Fi in your favorite DAW of choice. Tramtendo. What is going on guys? So I wanted to do this video for a while now, but I want to wait for the perfect moment. And now that I got your attention, you are here and let's learn. So there are a few things that you need to be able to do this. So the first thing is an iPad. I mean, duh. The second thing you'll need will be a software called Bonjour Printer. And I have a link in the description box to that and I'll show you how to install it as well as a software called RTP MIDI, which is a protocol that allows you to use Wi-Fi for your iPad inside of your DAW and recognize it as a MIDI controller. So what I'm gonna do here is walk you through that and then I'll show you the power of using an iPad inside of your DAW and it's crazy. So this tutorial is for Windows OS music producers or beat makers or musicians or whatnot. So uh, the link that will be in the description box will take you to uh, Bonjour Print Services for Windows. So you will need this software so that it can speak to your computer. And when I say it, I mean the iPad. So let's go ahead and hit download and the file download you see at the bottom left part of your screen or whatnot. I'm gonna click on it. Uh, I uninstalled it so I can just go through this process with you real quick and you'll see that you will need to hit next. So hit next here, uh, accept the terms of course because otherwise you can't install the software and hit next and I'm going to install it in the, the directory that it wanted me to install it in just to keep things simple and sweet. So now that I have the Bonjour print service on there. We're, we're good to go. So the next thing is to download this software called RTP MIDI. So you see that it says network MIDI drivers for Windows 7 and up. So if you have Windows 7, then you're fine and good to go. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and hit this link here so I can get to the RTP MIDI. Uh, and then it will say download RTP MIDI right here. So next thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and hit that download. And now it's downloaded. Now it's at the bottom left part of my screen here. I'm gonna go ahead and go to show in folder so I can go show in folder. I'm gonna just uh, cut and then you're gonna see my awful desktop that has a whole bunch of stuff on here. I'm gonna uh, paste it on my desktop and we're going to extract the files here. So, you know, just choose extract here and then you'll see right here and let me move it in so you can see it in context here uh, rtp midi setup so once you click on the rtp midi setup execution file it will actually tell you download and install the apple bonjour printer uh protocol and yeah i already did it so we're good to go and i'm gonna go ahead and agree to the license terms and conditions uh, i'm gonna hit install so now i'm installing the rtp midi service right here once it's done installing the RTP MIDI network, uh, the next thing you're gonna do is restart your computer to be able to launch it. Otherwise, it's probably not gonna work. So make sure that you do that. Restart your computer and come back. Now I have my DAW of choice open and that is FL Studio. So I'm using FL Studio for a reason here instead of Ableton Live. And I'll show you that in another video because it's gonna be really cool. And what I'm gonna go ahead and do is to continue the setup is go to MIDI settings. It does work in Ableton Live, by the way. I'm gonna click enable on this desktop, uh, whatever, which is basically uh, linking the protocol of RTP MIDI uh, to FL Studio right here. And now I'm gonna press on the screen. If you look at the top right side of the screen, you'll see my iPad and that app I'm using right now is called Poly Playground. And I have more apps in the description box. So uh, it's not working right now. And I know a lot of people might panic because of that, uh, but we're, what we're gonna do is pull up RTP uh, MIDI again. So as you can see in my directory, if you click on uh, that desktop, what whatever it's, it is, uh, you'll see that I have my iPad linked right here. So what you need to do is connect it. So connect your iPad to that. So once you connect it to the iPad, uh, make sure that it's enabled. Uh, it doesn't have anything for the latency. Sometimes you'll see the latency or whatever. So now I'm gonna press something. And I have Nexus 3 open. You can set it up in Ableton the same way. Basically, you would just go from, let me go from the start here and go to your preferences. And then you will go into your MIDI over here. And if you're wondering if 
why your Ableton looks different from mine, that's because I'm in the most recent version of Ableton Live, which is 10.16. And what I'm gonna go ahead and do here is I can set the input sync. I can go input sync, I can set up remote. I'm gonna go ahead and set up an output uh, and output sync. So that, therefore it will sing a, send a clock. Now I can do a whole bunch of stuff now uh, that I have it open. I have Poly Playground, so I can just go into Poly Playground here and select my chords. And I can just start making beats with uh, my iPad here. To add context to this video, I have my iPad right here so that you can see it here. I, I know it's gonna be a little blurry with this some, some cinematic stuff. But again, this is Poly Playground right here, and I could use this as a MIDI controller, uh, some software or whatnot. Uh, I do tend to forget how it works, uh, but you can switch all of your different scales and stuff like that. You can switch to a key. I'm gonna go ahead and try to find something that I really like. make it a little bit more jazzy because now I can set the different chords and stuff like that too as well. Uh, now that I resized everything, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, hit menu here. Uh, and then of course, you know, you can change the octaves and stuff like that. I'm gonna pick out a sound, maybe perhaps something out of that free pack that they had gave us. All right, so I'm in Summer Deep Chill. Let's find a synth sound that's gonna work. All right, so the next thing you gotta do is just record stuff normally. I'm gonna take some drums from uh, Kill Bill 3 here, make sure I got them in here. Uh, hey. Alright, I'm gonna tie that up. Make it a little louder, make the claps louder. Hey. Using the loop feature in FL. And let's try to lay out some bass here. I'm going to turn the recorder off. Swipe it up. It's a little difficult, so I'm gonna lay that down now. <laughs> Drive Kendo Tunes Radio. Whoa, <laughs> it just dropped that in there itself, huh? Let's uh, quantize that because that's badly. Turn that up. I just go ahead and use my keyboard for uh, laying out the kicks. Hey. I'm gonna go ahead and record the sequence with Poly Playground. Let's go ahead and do that. some presets. 
hi hats in here. Uh, let's go ahead and grab some hi hats. Uh, and grab some traditional hi hats here. Boom. And as you can see, <laughs> it could be pretty useful for getting quick melodies depending on what apps that you get for your iPad when you use it for your MIDI controller. So let's talk about some apps. Okay, so which apps should you get so you can use the iPad to its fullest potential inside of your DAW? Well, the first one I've already used, which is Poly Playground. Uh, the next app I wanna talk about here is this one right here, which is, what is this one? Uh, uh, chord poly pad and that's about the same premise except uh, it's a little flexible it's more flexible when it comes to changing scales and stuff like that then you have navicord uh, some of these you got to be careful with uh, as you can see it's it's working as it's displaying and whatnot but you don't hear any notes so you do have to set some of them up you know I have uh, MIDI enabled here but you might have to set it up to your network. Uh, let's see, go into MIDI here, MIDI IO. I'm gonna set it up to network one notes and it should work. Uh, if not, then whatever. Uh, oh, I'm in MIDI input, MIDI output. There we go, now you can hear it. And as you can hear, it's automatically generating chords inside of FL Studio. So if I go back to FL Studio, it is, <laughs> I got instant inspiration. I am pressed the freaking button. Quincy, which is another uh, generator that works with the same premise. Hey, remember, you got sometimes you got to set these up. So you got to set up to your network session, your MIDI out to the MIDI in of your um, session network. So make sure that you do that. Step Poly Arp Unit, and this one right here is incredible as well. Uh, just another random generator. And then you have uh, Quanticord. Quanticord uh, is another pretty good one here. I, I really like it for a couple of reasons here. I gotta uh, set up the network so it can actually work. There's another one. Of course, there's Chord Maps. And this one just, again, you gotta make sure that you set it up so that it's working through your network sessions. and you can play uh, the actual scale, you can play chords, and you can switch between different chord progressions and stuff like that on the fly. And I really like this too as well. And then there's this one right here, which is called Polyphase. Uh. <laughs> 